They're making so much money that they're like, uh, yeah, that, that dumb little American watch investment that I got going that I really is I'm really just it's using for clean cash. Yeah, right. Like that I'm, that's what I'm really using it for. But yeah, they're also making me some money. The dude says that he wants to get a G wagon to have an appearance. Like that's what people do. Like yeah, G wagon, course. Ferrari, all these like really yeah, really hype things. And the guy's like, well, yeah, well, he'll put it he'll put it in my name. It's a company car, so I own the car. Yeah, okay, he can get the car. I don't care. He can drive it. Done. Ooh, outfit change. Uh, you're not wearing the same thing you wore. And what is this? That's an old school wine opener. Why do you have that? Because our video today is uh, brought to you by our friends over at Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a monthly subscription, uh, a wine box um, that we'll be talking about a little bit later. It's based off of a quiz that uh, basically familiarizes the company with your palate. So it's very interesting. We'll be opening up some bottles later and uh, doing that. So, you can use our code, Theo yes, and Harris, to get 50% off your first uh, order of six bottles. So that's pretty cool. Do you see how flawlessly we did that? We did flawlessly. <laughs> Thank you to Bright Sellers. And now let's get into the conversation. All right, well, uh, I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and we, Harris Watch Up. What oh, we should do an intro. Well, you didn't say the, you didn't say what's oh, was up? Watch Up? Oh, well, that was weird. What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Up. I am the keeper of the status quo, apparently. <laughs> that feel weird? That felt weird. Hey, what's up? I'm Michael. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's funny? The moment that you realize that everyone else cares more about the tradition than, than the guy that has the tradition. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Everyone's like, where's the f***ing Boom Watch fam? Like, it's gone. I don't, uh, I don't know. I forgot to type it in. Anyway, once a week, maybe twice a week, sometimes Michael and I sit down, talk about watches, watch news. Uh, Michael wrote today's outline. So what are we talking about today? This is part two of a two-part series. The first one is, is Rolex producing scarcity by not making more watches? The second one is is the supply chain issue in the world, mm -hmm. how is that affecting watches? And is that going to ruin your watch investment or make you a very rich person? Yes. That's the topic that we'll talk about at the end. Today I wanna to show you, off, I wanna show off a quick watch, or two actually, one I saw on Reddit. We'll give a shout out to the Redditor, but then we'll close the episode and go home. Great. First watch, we've, uh, I've filmed this watch before. Yes. But this is the Loving Butterfly Automaton by Jackie Dro yes. with a meteorite dial. Yes. So if you don't know about this watch, the boy is riding a butterfly, whatever. That's brilliant. The design is beautiful. Yes. The meteorite, I just tossed that in because I was like, how insane can you possibly get? But everything else is 18 karat, red gold, pink gold, whatever mm -hmm. it may be. But there is a button on this watch that if you push it, that boy's wheel will spin and the wings of that butterfly will flap. Yes. So I figured that's probably one of my favorite watches I've shot so far. Yes. Just wanted to bring it up, not because you haven't seen it, right. but just because that's a very If you haven't brand. already seen it, yeah. Yeah. They look at the world in a, in a kind of in a very different way. Like they, 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 they produce very few watches. They sell very few watches. Yep. Um, but that's their business model, right? The whole idea is let's like stand for this, you know, this... I, well, it's not the way that they look at the world. It's the way that Jacques Dro, like like the old French you know, designer, who made uh, automatons and like robots and everything, exactly looked at the world. Like he he loved he loved this technology. So they are picking up the torch, right, and and, and bringing it into modernity. So I think it's 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 it's, it's amazing. I could not see myself buying an automaton on the wrist. I'd be so scared to, to see that wing fall when I slapped it against the subway door. Exactly. I'm like, oh, no. And it's $150,000. But it's very, very cool. And it's definitely for it's definitely for some people out there. Um, like, And I get it. I get why. Yeah. Right. Because you know it's 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 incredible, right? It's objectively it's it's not it's not only oh, it's new stunning. and interesting, yeah. but it's complex to manufacture. I mean, there's a there's a lot going on there, so it's a cool. Watch. For some reason, then we'll jump off. But for some reason, the only situation I picture this watch in is an elderly like grandfather figure mm. showing it to his grandson. Right. That is the only case I yeah, see it. Yeah, like yeah. they're at some like crazy event, like very fancy, yeah. and the grandfather like pushes it, yeah. and the grandson's just like transfixed. I could see. So uh, you know, obviously, what the you know, Jack and Joe makes a lot of watches, obviously. Yes. But I could see like that automaton business doing even better than the watch business. You know, I, oh, in yeah. the same way that old men were into like trains at one point, I could see very, very wealthy old men into automatons. Not the little boy riding, not that. But, yeah, right. You know, I don't know what I don't know exactly what it is, but you know, a, a machine they could wind and then watch. Complete some weird task. Bizarrely cool. Yeah. You know, a, a complete waste of money. <laughs> um, yeah. Two hundred thousand dollars for nothing. Yeah, but but brilliance, like but but 
kind but, of like a patron of the art. Like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. This video is brought to you by Bright Cellar. I love Bright Cellar. Yeah, Me right. and my Bright Cellar yeah, go I don't, way back. I don't think that's true. Michael doesn't drink. But I, on the other hand, not only do I like to drink and, and you know, socially. You also love uh, to drive. I also, <laughs> Separately, idiot, of course. Separately. <laughs> uh, no, you're an idiot. Such my hobbies idiot. involve drinking and driving. You're All those are two idiot. different things. Uh, but um, but yeah, I mean you know anyone that, anyone that you know kind of has made a hobby out of out of you know alcohol, yeah. um, a hobby out of it, not just of using course. it to get drunk, but making a hobby out of it, actually enjoying kind of the exploration, um, knows that it is quite difficult. Um, I have been basically exploring wine for I would say since I was I don't know seriously since I was like sixteen, which is kind of weird, very European family. Five years off, of uh, course. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it is, it really is very it really is very difficult. My dad's a big wine guy, um, and he was uh, I was very lucky to basically have a very knowledgeable wine guy literally in my house, you know, educate me a ton. Um, but I do know that that is not really a realistic, you know, expectation for people. It is not. Uh, and, and understanding what you like in wine and where to find it is extremely difficult. It's actually a little bit simpler than it seems, but on, on, its, on its surface, without help, it's, it's not impossible, but it's damn near impossible. Uh, and, and you can tell because go to anyone's house, 40s, 50s, and, and whatever, and they don't know what the frick they're drinking. And I see that so often. You know, what, what, what sort of acidity? It's not just acidity, but what sort of acidity are we tasting? We're not just tasting sweetness. What sort of sweetness? And then you de de develop your, you know, your palate. And that's yeah. really interesting. So Bright Cellars is, is basically just that. Um, they, you know, they, they, they give you a, a quiz, a seven-question quiz, uh, and, and then match you with wines in, in, a, in a box. I have three of the six wines that I got in my box right here that I'm going to continue to, to, to drink and then obviously continue to communicate my tasting notes with Bright Cellar. So uh, over the course of our relationship, they will be you know sending wines that are even more and more tailored to, to what I like to drink. Um, so long story short, wine is not easy, but with, with a knowledgeable helper like Bright Cellars, um, you can really become much more literate uh, in, in your own palate. So that's I, this is a good pairing for me because... Because this is, I've done this, so this is cool. I would agree. So if you want to get in on this action, you can go to Bright Sellers and use our code Theo and Harris to save fifty percent on your first order at checkout. Yes, you can. And also, waiter, come here, garçon. There's snails all over my <laughs> wife's plate. And also, what's with this old wine? Bring us the newest wine you have. Moving on to almost the complete opposite, which. Real quick shout out. What strap does it look like he's rocking? It looks like he's wearing a type one, but it's not, but it looks like it though. Yeah, I know. I, I double checked the art, the Reddit post. This is from yeah. Reddit user major underscore burnside. Cool. Great picture. But um, yeah, I thought that was the type one. Yep. So if you want a strap that looks very, very strikingly similar to that, yes. where should you go? Check out the Theo and Harris strap shop and, and all the straps are gorgeous, but that looks like the type one, uh, which is actually our first model strap ever. That's a beautiful strap. Yeah, they're they're incredible, handmade. About an hour or two hours outside of Paris. Um, I I absolutely adore those straps. Yeah, me too. But this is the Breitling Aerospace Evo, which the Breitling without the actual like digital screen, I feel like is also beautiful. I feel like Rolly has one very similar. Very similar. Very similar. It's called a Colt. It's a chronograph. Colt. Also quartz, right. but, also but not digital. I love the look of this watch. It's great. Which is the first thing. But the second thing is. This is a quartz watch. Mm -hmm. Battery lasts around three or four years. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just the perfect watch to be solar, and there's not a solar model yet. That's interesting. I haven't even thought about that. Perfect. Three to four years is, it just wow. doesn't seem like a long time. They could put it on the dial and everything. It'd be very cool. And um, I forget the, the specific name from Breitling. They have the watch that like you can push, and it will send out a distress signal. Okay. Same thing. It's like... Make all these solar. That's yeah. so cool. So do you think that solar is going to be playing a bigger role in the watch industry, you know, in the next five years? 100%. I feel like it already is in, like, certain brands. But when you have, like, a Breitling Aerospace Evo and you're fine with quartz, mm -hmm. I feel like you'd be like, yeah, of course I want it to last for 20 years instead right. of three or four. Like, yeah, right. especially the Breitling marketing, which with that watch that will send out a distress signal, it's this is my last chance of, like, surviving if yeah, it does that. Yeah, right. I don't want my battery to die. Interesting. You that's know? actually, I, I agree with that completely. I think that's very smart. That's going to be cool. But yeah. I just think this watch is gorgeous. It is titanium. Yep. 43. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Wow. Cool. I didn't even realize that. So the guy was saying it's it's shockingly light, yeah, as everybody says light. with titanium. Yeah. 43 millimeters, so a little too big for me. But they Wait, do. This guy must have a 
in gorilla wrist. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. god! I thought that watch was thirty six. <laughs> no, holy sh! It comes in a thirty eight, but this is a this is a forty three. Oh my God, Mr. B- Major Burnside. Major Burnside. Got put up a photo right of him hurt. next to his wife, like smiling. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Holy sh! But the the nice part is with this, you get a chronograph, countdown timer, second time zone, alarm, minute repeater, calendar, cool. all stuff that's yeah, of course, if it's a digital display. But I do think it's a very unique watch that either looks incredibly cheap or incredibly cool. De- yeah. Literally depending on the light. Yeah, well, I, I, I think they're just—I think they're really just cool. I, I really do. I, I think it's—it's—it makes sense. It's a utility watch. I think they did the design pretty freaking well, but it's super, it's super weird. I, I think it's great. I think they did a great job with this watch. Um, I know it's this is not in their current collection, correct? Yeah, there is one. There is one. I don't think it's this it's specific this one, model. Yeah. Yep. But uh, I think it's cool. I, I really do. I think that Breitling embraced that whole digital like thing, the whole digital you know technology, I suppose, that movement or whatever. Um, more but the 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 only people that, have, that did it at the time in like a luxury space, right? Especially I mean, in this way, yeah. No, That's no very one, unique. no one yeah. did that. And again, in a luxury way, of course, everyone everyone did it in the entry level. But as far as like a luxury brand taking on the the task of digital, um, Bradley did it super well. Yeah. Which is what you've said before too. Like this is the direction I would love to see their marketing mm-hmm. because I go on hikes. I don't trail through Alaska in the freezing cold, right? But I would love that feeling of like, oh yeah, this is the hike watch. Yes. It's solar powered for this reason. You have the extra information with the digital well, display. Breitling misses just about every chance to message well. Period. You're right. Like they, they just do. I mean, they, their, their, you know, their, their graphic design is pretty is good. It's actually, I think it's really it's good. Yeah. Um, but their, uh, their messaging is, uh, is. Uh, not as good as their graphic design. Let's just say that. Okay, the big topic. Supply chain issues in general. No need to discuss the how that's happening or whatever, mm-hmm. but it is very easy to acknowledge that there are supply chain issues mm-hmm. worldwide. I am trying to, and I have been trying to make jackets for my company for a year, mm-hmm. and I just can't get it done because yes. nothing is here. Yes. It, yes. So the result we've been seeing, obviously inflation, whatever it may be, but when it comes to things that you... Whatever it may be, a little footnote. <laughs> uh, whatever else it could prick, possibly be. sensitive prick. <laughs> well, the, it's I'm kidding. I know up, you don't feel that way. No, opening up for fighting. So I'm trying to just stick to watches, you know? But... I mean, well, I'm like, my I'm twitching. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, well, it could, it could be other things too, right? But when stuff like this happens, a lot of people make a lot of money and a lot of people lose a lot of money. Go figure. Go figure. Oh my God. Go. Who would have thought? I'm scared of what people will comment. I should have been afraid of what afraid you of would say. Uh, so, the big solo watch focus is, if you get a watch right now with these supply chain issues, everything is going up. Cartier Solar Beat, for example, we said it was going for like 11, 12,000. Yeah, I, I've, I've seen them offered now in like the five, like six category, you know, but I've also seen them at 12. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. there's always outliers and stuff, but even double the price for crazy. quartz solar movement is yeah. insane. So in terms of watches, you can either do that and sell a Cartier for that mm-hmm. much, or you can be that person that buys, you know, they stack up on Rolexes, for example. There's right. a fluke with the 80s and they get three date just or day dates or whatever. Right. And they're like, dude, I'm going to save these for like, three years, they'll quadruple, right. and I got the bag. Obviously, if supply chain issues don't resolve, they probably will, but if they do resolve, you're gonna be in trouble, probably, or is the watch market already reacting to that and you still won't be able to get it? I, I don't really know if the supply, I don't know how quickly the supply chain issues are going to be resolving. I, I don't think it's gonna be no, quick. I, I, think think that, I, think be the new, I think this is probably the new normal for a very, very long time, right? You've Same. got, you've got for many, many people, more money, Yep. And and the the uh, uh, spending's wildly well, so I'm saying, so There's more money, so so the, the demand is higher than it's ever been. Yep. Uh, and the supply not only did not keep up, but actually went below where it ever was. So you exactly. know you don't even need both to happen for there for there to become inflation. You don't even need that to happen. You know you don't even need that for the supply chain to break. You just need uh, you know a- any gap. This was double gap. You know this was double. This- insane yeah you know it's just you just can't get anything you know anymore. why you know it, you know yeah if, for example we're talking about the last conversation say rolex makes a million a year yeah rolex now literally can't make a million a year right what happens rolex can make five hundred thousand. right They're, it's not like we will know yeah because they don't release that but all of a sudden 
ADs instead of getting their five watches are getting two, are getting yes. one. Yeah, and small ADs are getting none. It's crazy, and you're seeing it basically in every sector, in everything. Go buy an appliance right now. You, you, yeah. you can't get one. Yeah. You know, go buy. I mean, go basically go buy anything. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, I think that clothes are like. You, you can basically get clothes now, but apart from that, you know, it's really difficult to buy Even stuff. Even clothes, like I said. I, oh, right. You, you, I you're getting, in the manufacturing. You, you're, yeah, oh, yeah, Manufacturing yeah. is just, you know, I would imagine it's cooked. cooked. Yeah. yeah, like the brands I'm talking to, I'm like, because I'm not getting that many. I'm like, is, is it a money thing? Like, why can't this be done? And they're like, we... It's not possible. It's not possible. We can't. We just, like... We can make 500 of these a day. That's it. There is 15,000 in the backlog. You That's know what it. I mean? Right. It's, they're just like, we don't have it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Isn't that nuts? It's insane. So the question really comes to, you know, what does this mean for the watch industry, right? And then, you yeah. know, kind of... This what happens in the next five years? Long term or even further than that. You know, yeah, what exactly. happens in, in 10 or 15 years? And, you know, I'll start off with this. Watch prices are crazy. We know that. Yes. Um, I am not really plugged into the world of... Like uh, like the crazy number Rolex selling at premiums. I don't I don't do it. I sure. haven't I haven't done it. I'm not yeah. interested in it. I don't read about it. I don't talk about it. You see it as a fluke in time and not a emergence of a new market. Yeah, I mean, well, there's a little bit of you know, there's a little bit of truth everywhere. Like I, I was talking to someone the other day that said, you know, that said, I don't think we'll ever see, I don't think you'll ever get a discount on a Mercedes again. I don't think you'll ever yeah. get a discount on a Rolex. My again. friend said that because he, he had he has a Rolex and he was like, I mean, it's never going below retail. It's, it's never, never going below retail, and I think you'll always have to wait a little bit. That's fine. I think those yeah. two things are very normal. Yeah. If you asked me three years ago if the watch industry was actually in a good place, I would have told you no for a different reason. But no, the problem was that there was such an oversupply and a lack of demand yeah. that uh, that that so much was being manufactured and ending up ultimately on the gray market. So why would I buy an Omega Speedmaster? From no. from Omega at sixty five hundred, when I could buy it on Joma Shop at thirty seven, you right, know, right, and and there are plenty of reasons why you should buy it from Omega, but of to many people they were like, yeah, fuck it, I'll take a shot, yeah, you know, but but the question is, forget about the buyer and their decision making. Why are these watches even available there? Yeah, brand new, <laughs> right? You know, right. it's crazy. Yeah. So um, so in many ways we all, we almost overcorrected. You know. Yeah. I don't understand the concept of getting discounts on lug on items. I don't really get it. Right. Price it accordingly. What is this? I, I don't. I don't the, understand the no sale philosophy because that shows that I'm making more money than I should. Right. Type deal. It yeah. makes no sense. Like, why? Why should I expect to go into Breitling and get twenty percent off or fifteen percent? I don't understand. Right. Give me a fucking hat and send me on my way. Yeah. Like, don't send me on yeah. my way. You know. But <laughs> slap them on the tuchus. Yeah. Right. Slap them <laughs> on the tuchus. And and uh, and that's it. And, and and move on. Right. Yeah. So so it's it's better in a way, but it way way overcorrected. Yeah, yeah, which is something I, I honestly didn't even think about. The fact that the watch world changed right before the watch consumer changed, mm -hmm. and then shortly after that, every way of producing watches changed. Yes. And basically just crashed into each other. Exactly. So you exactly. see this as, which which I agree was going to be the point, I think you're going to be fine. I don't suggest ever... Well, it depends on who you are. You're, you're going to be oh, fine because oh, yes, you apply to everyone. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think so... so you know, I'm not really involved in all, and I don't, I don't buy and sell those watches. I you don't. Are, I've right. never bought a Rolex for retail. Period. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 yeah, just haven't been able to do it. You know? <laughs> it's difficult. It's amazing. It's, amazing. it's very yeah. difficult. If you haven't heard, um, but um, but all the people that I know that are that are a vast majority of the sales of these watches, whether it be the Green Day Date or Daytona or whatever, the vast majority of the sales that I am aware of, because I hear it and I'm, you know, I'm in sure. dealer groups. It's dealer to dealer. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so I wonder if more of the clients, the people that are actually justifying these numbers, are dealers and not end users. Because if there if there aren't the end users to justify this, right? What what's going on? Like right. What? <laughs> yeah. What's happening? That's curious. Right. But dealers are, I think, are feeling very, very safe in owning this inventory because they don't. It's not, they don't feel like it's going anywhere. So a dealer could yeah. have seven or mm. eight green day, day dates or and Daytonas. two in the back for special friends, which is a whole issue exactly. of that topic. Right. If so you feel so safe where you're hiding inventory, you're hiding inventory, etc. And in these 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 secondhand dealers as well, like they've got they've got they got five green day dates. Yeah. Well, why does this guy feel so comfortable? Right and and, and mm -hmm. you know what did this guy pay for these watches? Because if he paid ninety two, and that's the reason why I think it's worth ninety two, 
no, the price is dictated by the end user. Not, not the middleman. Yeah, yeah, not right, by the right. middleman, you yeah. know, or it shouldn't be at least, or rather that's not sustainable. It is for now, but not sustainable. So I don't, I only know maybe one, a couple, I mean, small, small handful, I'd say 10% mm-hmm. of the sales that I know of, and this is not research, I mean, this is just, this is totally anecdotal, but I'm being honest, right? 10% maybe all go to end users. The rest are owned by dealers. So yeah. the end users that are in those watches, I think that they will end up getting fucked. Um, they, they'll take, they, they'll they're take, in for that number. They'll take yeah, losses. Course. They'll right. they'll take losses uh, at the end of the day. Most of them, um, but um, but the middle guy is doing great. Right, like <laughs> he's right. actually killing the you. middle guy. Yeah, the middle guys. But ultimately, the middle guy will, will crash and burn too because if he owns oh, you know, yeah, ten yeah. or twenty of these watches at ninety thousand dollars, and the values drop down. Let's say the watches are uh, re, let's say the the your olive dated so retails forty three thousand. Right now they're selling for like ninety five. So let's say the 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 real value, like which is still really f- high, is fifty eight. Yeah. Right. So let's say it's you know fourteen thousand dollars over right retail. And that's that's pretty sustainable. Yeah. Ten fifteen thousand. That's sustainable. Mm-hmm. But this guy's gonna take a fucking bath on the ten watches he has. He's gonna take a twenty thousand dollar bath on. I mean, yeah, that's right. crazy. Or a thirty thousand dollar bath on each one. Yeah. So and that's when I think you'll see all the collapse. And, and the only thing, and I'm sorry for no, 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 no. the only other thing is going to be how much outside money is involved. Because if there's a ton of outside say, money, there say. will be no panic selling. Yeah. Because you've got some oligarch or whoever the f- whether he's from Colombia or Russia or wherever the f- cuz really everyone that I know that has like all this like oligarch money yeah. it's all international As you Arab say, yeah, whatever yeah. it may be so they're like you know them the 3 million whatever. 5 million whatever. Like, whatever. Cause like, yeah. all yeah. right like we we'll just wait it out and then the dealers are like yeah we'll just wait it out and the guy's like cool that's what I was going to say. Me. I was going to say that's exactly the issue right now. Every, not every, there's probably some out there that are different from the norm. Every middleman that we see is fast money, a lot of money, immediate. But oh, they're bankrolled. I mean, that's it. It's, yeah, it's, that's like, I mean. it's, like, any, it's like any tech business, right? Like, how all of a sudden you're rich? Well, because you got backed and you're paying your lifestyle, not a profit. You what know you, what I mean? What like, do you mean you have a $200 million brand right. <laughs> that you started a week ago? What yeah, are you talking about? You mean you got funding. Yeah, That's right. what you mean. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh, okay. That's how you bought your Ferrari. Oh, cool. That's all. Awesome. Like, yeah, exactly. Right. So You didn't sell a thousand Rolex. Exactly. Yeah. So that, and, and I get it because they're telling these, these you know, finance guys that, that whether it's a Russian guy or a Colombian guy. Whoever, or, whoever's on the matter. phone with the cat. This guy's got way bigger fucking fish to fry. This dude's making, you know, 50, 100, 500, you know, 200 million, whatever the f- they're making you so much money that they're like, uh, yeah, that, that dumb little American watch investment that I got going that I really is I'm really just it's using for clean cash. Yeah, right. I, that I'm, that's what I'm really using it for. But yeah, they're also making me some money. The dude says that he wants to get a G wagon to have an appearance. Like that's what people do. Like yeah, G wagon, Ferrari, all these like really yeah, really hype things. And the guy's like, well, yeah, well, he'll put it, he'll put it in my name. It's a company car, so I own the car. Yeah, okay, he can get the car. I don't care. You can drive it. Done. Sure. And it's gonna sell more watches. Yeah, sure. It's gonna clean more money. Done. Cool. Yeah. Whatever. Everyone watched Ozark, and now they're fucking. Now everyone's <laughs> yeah. Marty Bird now. It's like unbelievable. CEO. Like, oh. Yeah. Whatever oh, happened to oh. just making money like <laughs> us? Like whatever happened to just like I don't know. You buy something, whether it, you buy something or produce something that, and you sell it for more than you paid for. Whatever happened? Making to that? money is not convincing like, someone else that you will be making money. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. I, I, yeah. It's it's amazing. It's bizarre, really. It's concerning. Anyways, that's about it. Watch World is looking fantastic as always. That, that being said, um, I li- literally like, you know, as far as safe, in- and there are plenty of safe investments, like yes. in vintage and even in modern, like there's plenty of safe. Like I put money, a ton of money into vintage watches that I am not, I mean, it's not hoarding. I, I know they're going to go up. They're yeah. not going to go up because I'm creating scarcity. They're going to go up because people are going to look and realize that, wow, $1,500 is too little for that. I would yeah. pay two thousand. And that's yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They're not going up four hundred percent a year. Right. That's it. They're, they're climbing steadily, and they're beautiful. And you know, it's, you know, let's say vintage Omega, blah 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 blah, vintage thirty-four millimeter Rolex watches are great. They're not going anywhere. You know, everywhere they're not going anywhere but up, and they're going up slowly, slowly yes. and safely. This conversation is focused on watches being produced right now. Yes. Generally speaking, watches are, at the moment, and I think for the long term, watches are a fantastic investment. And even over retail, some of them are fantastic investments. Yep. But I think the stupid money ones, I think they are, a lot of them are terrible, terrible investments. A yep. lot of them. Again, we'd have to go reference by reference to really, by based on rarity and of all course, that stuff. But um, but yeah, I think that uh, a lot of it is all fake. You know what's real? That ass. Oh, he's <laughs> what? right. What, what did he say? What? <laughs>